Hey guys, what's going on? Blaine back for another Netflix review, and today I'm going to be talking about Still Time. Still Time is an Italian comedy drama that tells the story of Dante, a man who seemingly has everything going well for him in life. He has a steady job and is in a relationship with the love of his life, Alice. However, his commitment to work routinely gets in the way of their quality time together. One day after waking up following a surprise party for his 40th birthday, he discovers that time has suddenly jumped forward one year, resulting in significant events happening that he has no recollection of. As time continues to jump forward one year every few hours, Dante has to find a way to slow things down and enjoy the finer things in life again before his life passes him by. This was a fun and thought-provoking dramedy that did a great job at exploring the importance of maintaining a healthy work-life balance and the consequences that come with not doing so. Some of the details behind its central concept don't always make sense, but when it's focused on its main characters, the movie is excellent. The main character, Dante, is the classic workaholic who never has time for his partner and always gets sidetracked with random things. Though this concept isn't anything new, what makes him so refreshing is how honest and loving he is as a character and his motivations for working so much. Dante works hard so that he can provide an ideal life for his partner and ensure that their future family is set up for success. He never comes across as a bad guy or forgetful or anything like that, so it was nice to see him portrayed as someone who means well with his actions, even if they cause some issues. He's so caught up in his own routine that he fails to give adequate attention to others, be it his friends or family or his partner, which results in his relationships changing with them. He's a relatable character who's stuck in the never-ending grind for success, and it was interesting to see how he came to realize that success was much much closer than he realized. Alice is very much the opposite from Dante, and I enjoyed seeing this angle play out. She's an artist who works from home, while her partner works high-level business executive jobs, and this immediate difference in lifestyle between them makes it easier to understand her troubles with Dante's work, and even relate to her as well. Despite her issues with Dante being away from home so much, she still loves him dearly, and I love seeing the side of her. Even with the sudden time jumps, her resentment of Dante's overworking is slow and gradual, reflecting the amount of time meant to pass in the jumps. The movie takes time to transform her as a character, as she still loves and cares about Dante, but over time the degree of these feelings change, and it all happens in a natural way. This becomes more evident as the relationship dynamic between these two characters is explored. Both of them have understandable sides, with Dante wanting to provide and Alice wanting him to be present. It's a difficult situation where both characters are in the right for what they want. And like I said before, the love these two characters have for each other is what makes them work so well. Even in the bad times, they still find ways to laugh, kill time, or at the very least cooperate with each other. It feels like a real love story actually taking place, where the love they had for each other is still there, but as time moves forward, it's not the same as it once was. The emotional weight of the story really starts to ramp up as time passes, and Dante realizes the mistakes he's made as a result of his actions. It starts on an intriguing note, with Dante surprised by the fact he has a daughter just one year after his 40th birthday, and things only snowball from there. One thing after another adds up as Dante continues sticking to his workaholic habits, and although I felt bad for him, I couldn't help but be amused by his good-natured ignorance. It goes to show how much can happen in just a few short years, and how important it is to make time to appreciate these things that do happen, whether good or bad, because ultimately it's what makes us human. Speaking of time, the concept of the time jumps or traveling, or whatever one wants to call them, is definitely the main driving force of the story outside of the romance. The way they're implemented at random was a bit off-putting at first, but eventually I came to understand the significance as to why they were implemented the way they were. The jumps are used as a sort of wake-up call for Dante to get his act together and change his habits so that he can live a happier life. They're the only way to grab his attention, and this is used to great dramatic effect as his loved ones start to suffer their own individual struggles. I really appreciated that the movie took time to address other characters in the story outside of the romance. Dante's relationships with everyone from his lonely dad to his unhealthy best friend Valerio suffer more as Dante continues to neglect them. It adds a lot more urgency to Dante's plight as he realizes his actions affect more than just Alice. This being said, there's also plenty of humor to be found in the absurdity of the time jumping scenarios. It was hilarious to see Dante try to recall something that happened in his life when he doesn't remember experiencing it. This results in him being thoroughly unprepared for a lot of funny moments, like him trying to calm a crying baby, attending couples therapy, and trying to make sense of new romances for both him and Alice. While these scenes are funny at first, they also serve an important point, in that they emphasize the fact that life goes on, even after missing out on time that could have been spent in better ways. Dante becomes gradually overwhelmed by all the life events he never experienced properly, which makes it easier to sympathize with him as he tries to hold on to what he has in vain. 
As much as I like the main concept though, there are issues I have with it. To start, there's not much of a consistent logic as to how the jumps happen. Sometimes they occur when Dante sleeps, while other times it happens when he walks through a door, and suddenly he finds himself one year further into the future. It's never really explained as to how and when the jumps activate. I understand that the jarring nature of the jumps are meant to disrupt Dante and change his lifestyle, but the lack of context behind them leaves the pacing feeling awkward at times. It was also weird with how Dante sort of just stops addressing the time jumps after a while. I suppose one could consider Consider him as being burdened by his ever-changing relationships to Alice and everyone else, but his lack of response to them toward the end left the impact of what happens to him later on a bit more disappointing. Thankfully, the movie's technical elements help offset some of the inconsistencies behind the time jumps. The ambient soundtrack and numerous props used to reflect time passing help to convey a sense of nostalgia to the audience that helps them sympathize with Dante's lack of it, and for as abrupt as the jumps can be, the cinematography and editing is still smooth and makes for a seamless transition. And above all else, the movie does well in its observation of its central theme regarding time and how people use and lose it. It's easy to get caught up in one's habits under the assumption of doing so for one's goodwill, and the movie has a great message about encouraging others to reevaluate one's time so that it benefits everyone in the long run. Overall, Still Time is a great Italian dramedy that highlights the importance of maintaining a healthy work-life balance. If you like dramedies with romantic elements and are looking to watch something more current and relatable, you'd enjoy checking this out. I wish there would have been a bit more logic behind the time jumps, though I suppose there is nothing logical about them, and the movie is so well done on other fronts that it makes up for it. Time is a valuable quantity that many people unfortunately waste, but if there's one thing I learned from this movie, it's that there's always still time to turn things around. What did you think about this movie? Did you enjoy the comedic and dramatic importance of its time jumps, or did you find them confusing instead? Let me know in the comments below. Anyways guys, that's going to wrap up my review of Still Time. Thanks for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it, and as always, stay tuned for the next part, where next time I review the French crime thriller In His Shadow. Bye bye!